How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you through my very own transfer plan for the upcoming Double Game Week 37. So yes, the penultimate game week of the season is upon us and Double Game Week 37 looks like it won't disappoint. Now I'll be activating the Bench Boost chip for the upcoming Double Game Week and I'm pretty sure you guys are on the same strategy. So in this video, I'll show you guys how I might be forced to take a minus 4 hit because of all these injuries. But hopefully with the bench boost active, we can still get a green arrow after a pretty strong game week 36. That's how I'm going to start with this video, a quick review of how game week 36 went. Was it a green arrow? Was it a red arrow? And what overall rank are we currently sitting on? And then I'll jump into all the double game week 37 goodness. So if that's something you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So as you guys can see, game week 36 has actually been a pretty strong game week. We've had a green arrow from 9.9k to the 6k mark. The actual overall rank is 6,001. Now obviously we have a game coming up tonight, United taking on Crystal Palace. We've got news that a potential Bruno Fernandes injury is going to keep him out of the game. So if you guys do own him, hopefully you're getting some bench jam for him. Fingers crossed though, the top 10k doesn't have too many kind of high point subs, as I'm hoping the green arrow stays pretty strong after tonight's fixture. Now if you guys do have a Ganacho, an Anana, a Delot, unfortunately Harry Maguire is also injured, but those players will obviously affect the overall rank and I'll give you guys the updated rank in the team selection coming up later in the week. But we should be getting a green arrow even after tonight's games and I'm really happy about that to hopefully cement a fourth top 10k finish. So in the comments down below, how did your game week go? Was it a good week? Was it a bad week? And how's that overall rank looking? In terms of the game week points, we've scored 111 with a game week rank of 61k, which takes us to an overall points of 2,383. For the upcoming double game week 37, we've got one free transfer and 5.5 in the bank. So quite a big upgrade can be made if you want to go there. So let's see where that green arrow and that 111 points came from. Well, tonight I have Onana and Ganacho on the bench, but I won't be needing them as my entire starting 11 did feature. So if you guys do own these assets, good luck. Hopefully it's going to be a strong result. But with all these United injuries, it's not looking too great. But hopefully Ganacho does well for next week, as I will have him on my bench boost. Pedro Porro, luckily we benched him, he got 0 points, was expected though against a strong Liverpool attack, and after conceding 4 goals, you're probably going to get 0 points. Then with Van Hecker, he was rumoured out for this fixture and therefore well, that was confirmed, so 0 points for him as well. Now because Anana's on the bench, I started Petrovic and luckily he got a clean sheet. He's actually been returning a few clean sheets recently from Game Week 35's double Game Week 36, and he was part of that convincing win against West Ham. So no save points unfortunately, but 6 points, I mean beating Edison this week was going to be enough. So really happy that I have him. Now the chance we did this week was going to be to bring in Ben White for Connor Bradley. We were going kind of 50-50 till the deadline, Gabriel versus Ben White. Only 1 point difference between them. So I went for Ben White for the increased attacking threat. He did have a few kind of expected assists in this game, but overall quite a quiet game from that Arsenal defence. Dan Byrne was the only player, kind of spoiler alert here, but the only player in our starting 11 that actually blanked. And if you watch that game, Newcastle lost their clean sheet in the 80th minute. So that was quite a hard one to take, especially for you Fabian Shaw owners. Going for Dan Byrne was a little bit of a differential. So to lose the clean sheet so late on was quite disappointing, and I think Newcastle won 5-1 anyways. So as mentioned, Dan Byrne, the only player in the starting 11 to not score, would have loved a full house. Then finding out offense, Guardiola manages to tick along quite nicely. No, he actually didn't get a clean sheet. This was an assist plus a bonus point, which took him to the overall six. So once again, pretty happy that he outperformed Edison, as that was quite a popular section for you wildcarders. And he's getting forward a load in these fixtures. So I just wish that Dan Byrne ended up returning, as it would have been a full house, but overall quite a good performance. Now midfoot apartment, going to start off with Human Son, who got quite a late goal against Liverpool, which took him to seven points. And I'll take that considering how bad Spurs looked in the first half. Just kind of all over the place once Madison and Richarlison came on the field, it looked like a rejuvenated squad, and Son had some great dribbles in this fixture. So with most people actually benching Son or not even owning him, I was quite happy with his performance. Even if you guys probably bench Son, you'll be getting him off for Bruno's injury. As I mentioned, there's a lot of bench jam going around. Cole Palmer was started by the majority of managers though for his kind of good performances. I won't lie though, with Chelsea scoring so many goals, I do believe one goal is quite unlucky. I've always seen him more of a talisman than that. So if you guys did go for the Cole Palmer Campsy, that's quite unlucky. But his points are basically net zero, as his effective ownership is so high. 
Gordon also got an assist and a clean sheet point. He was subbed off before Newcastle actually lost the clean sheet, so that takes him to an overall 6. So I was quite happy with the assist, but as with Cole Palmer, when your team is scoring so many goals, would have loved Gordon to be more involved. So just the one attack return here. Same could be said about Foden as well. I mean, you guys know Erling Haaland scored so many goals, Foden only involved in one assist. It seems like this was the game week of only kind of players in high scoring teams that only got one attacking return. But his ownership is also pretty high, at least he outperformed Kevin De Bruyne, but quite a high scoring game as well. But going to the forward department, Effie, the star performer, the reason we went over the 100 club mark was Erling Haaland, scoring 4 goals and 42 total captaincy points. Simply outrageous kind of game week, I'm actually quite happy though that he ended up scoring. There was a few of you over on Discord that were asking me about the triple captaincy chip, so hopefully you guys went with Erling Haaland. But most people went for the camp C on him, unlucky if you guys didn't. And that's why the Nicholas Jackson points were actually better. So yes, you guys are looking at this right, I haven't got the graphic wrong. Nicholas Jackson scored 16 total points. A few attacking returns in that 5-0 win. Just happy that I brought him in for a hit last game week. That hit just continues to pay off. And his ownership is quite nice in the top 10k. So hopefully you guys did own Nicholas Jackson. He's just proving that he's not kind of a Darwin regen. And 16 points is massive in game week 36. Then the final player, Isaac, also ticking along nicely. Unfortunately, only 7 points in this game because he missed the penalty. So this could have been a whole bunch more points, which would have been lovely. And I do worry now that he's going to be off penalties with Callum Wilson coming back into the team. So let's see what happens. I mean, I'm not going to take him out with a double game week coming up, but Callum Wilson might be a nice differential. But now that you guys see the entire starting 11, you guys will understand that Dan Byrne was the only player to blank. Would have been a full house, but I guess we got burnt. How did your game week go? I'm pretty actually happy with this performance. If we can stick around the 6k, 7k mark, I'll be mighty happy, as that'll put us in a great position for a potential top 5k push. But now let's go on to the double game week 37 transfer plan, or at least my team selection with no transfers made. This gives you guys the context before I talk about the plan moves. So just a reminder, one free transfer and 5.5 in the bank, so I can basically afford anyone in an upgrade. Now the biggest thing about Double Game Week 37 is the bench boost and as you guys can see, I've edited the bench slightly with a different color, just to give you guys the context that I am bench boosting. So currently with no transfers made and chances are we do make a transfer on the bench, I've got a Nana Ganacho, Ben White and Van Hecker. So Van Hecker, it's kind of a weird situation, we've got rumors that he's out for the season, but De Zerbe hasn't said it or confirmed it in the press conferences, so fingers crossed we get some more news this week. But Anana and Ganacho play tonight, let's hope they get out kind of injury free, and they have a double game week of Arsenal and Newcastle. So definitely that Newcastle game that you will be targeting, Belize it is two home fixtures, but not really expecting much against Arsenal. Then Ben White with the reverse fixture United away, I think that Arsenal can have a pretty strong game attacking and defensive wise, with all these United injuries. Finally with Fonecker, what are the odds that he kind of isn't in the team, and they finally keep a clean sheet, and that's against Aston Villa. Now against Newcastle and Chelsea, wasn't expecting much from him, but he is quite cheap. But I'm expecting him to actually be out for game week 37. Now starting 11 in combination with the bench boost is going to be Petrovic between the sticks. Now I'm actually putting my worst players on my bench for this team selection. But you guys might do your bench boost slightly differently. I do believe Petrovic has the better chance of points than Onana does. And that's why he's in my starting 11. Now the back line is going to be Pedro Porro. The Burnley at home game is the one to target. Hopefully there's a clean sheet. As I'm not expecting one against Man City. We've got Dan Byrne with Brighton United. Newcastle are defending slightly better at the moment. But at least he has a double game week. Then with Guardiola, I'm expecting hopefully two starts. Definitely the most informed player at the moment. And seems like he's quite integral in that starting 11. Almost playing out of position. So let's just hope that he outperforms Edison. As mentioned, quite a popular option on the wild card, Or maybe one or two attack returns. Now midfoot apartment, Son, Palmer, Gordon and Foden all have double game weeks. And honestly, this might be the kind of selection on a free it. It's always quite nice to have the kind of free it draft in your team. And I think all these players could do really well. In terms of midfielders that I might be missing out on, potentially a Bruno if he is back, or someone like a Richarlison. But you are quite reliant on that Burnley at home game. Then our front line is Erling Haaland, Nicholas Jackson and Isaac, probably the front three on a free it as well. With the KMC armband on the Norwegian. Now you guys can go slightly differential, I think that Isaac will be my vice captain, so you guys can also go for him as a Campsy option. But I just think that to go against Erling Haaland, you have to be quite maverick. If you guys do have the triple Campsy, perfect opportunity, I do think it will outperform my triple captain. I think Erling Haaland scored about 10 points in that double game week. 
But overall, the starting 11 at least looks pretty decent, but the bench does need some work, especially if Van is out injured. What transfer would you guys suggest me doing in the comments down below, or would you guys actually take a minus 4 or minus 8 with some more transfers? Well, let's go on to that transfer plan with one free transfer and 5.5 in the bank, and with the bench boost active, I'm looking for an upgrade. So the first obvious player we spoke about is unfortunately Van Hecke. Let's hope we get some concrete news about his kind of injury timeline this midweek. But I already have the expectation that he's out for this season. So Van Hecke out, I've got enough money in the bank to afford basically anyone. And if I do choose to only make one free transfer, I think Romero is the most popular option. Now I know what you guys are thinking, Spurs defense looks simply terrible, but they do have that Burnley at home game. And then in game week 38, if I choose to play Romero, he has Sheffield United away. Now I don't actually need Romero to play game week 38, so if there was an option that had a double game week and a bad game week 38 fixture, I still would probably go for them. At the moment though, the defenders are just so scarce, there's not really many options to look at, and that's why it might be Romero, as I think he's the best double game week. Now I could also go for a fun defend, he's a little bit less kind of controversial, Romero could get a red card for example, whereas fun defend might be a little bit more disciplined, but I think the Argentinian offers some more attacking threat. So this transfer is pretty kind of set if I do go for only one move, however I could go for some variations. One of the variations might be to go for someone like a Saliba or a Gabriel from Arsenal, but I'm not super fond of doubling up for that United away game. Another option that has a good game in game week 37 is Mitakowski, yes it's a single game against Sheffield United, but it's one of the best defensive fixtures in the game week. Now like this for example, Arsenal away next week but I don't have to play him, I only need him for game week 37. But you guys can see that the kind of defenders are a little bit scarce at the moment. I mean, if I'm going for a single game week player in a double game week, you know it's pretty scarce. But Tarkowski offers some upside. So there are a few options, and the Romero is probably the most nailed. I don't have a Spurs triple up at the moment. That would allow me to get it for that Burnley at home game. But Tarkowski or Gabriel could be other alternatives. Now there's another chance that I could actually do from minus four additionally to this. Obviously if an X out injured. Now the reason I might actually go for a Tarkowski over Romero is if I do want to upgrade Ganacho to someone like a Richarlison, but this will be for a minus 4. I just think with a Richarlison back from injury as well as that Sheffield United game in game week 38 where I could play him, this could be worth the minus 4 hit. I'll be scouting tonight though, if that United lineup doesn't look strong against Crystal Palace, I might be tempted for this move, and this will complete my Spurs triple up and therefore I'd have to go for someone different to Romero. But this move is a little bit out there, I don't exactly know if it's worth the minus 4, but it could be. But definitely something on my mind. Now if I do actually go for Romero and I just want to upgrade Ganacho, I could take a minus 4 for someone like a Bruno if he's back from the injury. But this will all come down to if I think Bruno scores more than 4 points this week. So you guys can comment down below, do you think that Ganacho to Bruno is worth the minus 4 solely for double gaming 37? I guess he's on penalties, but this might actually be closer than we think. Just something that I was thinking about to kind of improve the quality of my bench boost, and this might actually be worth the 4 points. The most conservative approach, the most likely one probably is going to be Romero in for Faneca, but if I don't like the look of Ganacho, I could always do the Richarlison or Bruno Fernandes move. But comment down below, what do you guys think about these transfers? Is there another transfer that you guys might think of? Or if you want to ask me about your own transfer plans, comment it down below on my Discord server where I am slightly more active. Otherwise, good luck for tonight if you guys do own those United assets. Otherwise, hopefully you get some bench jam from Bruno. And I'll miss you guys for more videos coming up this midweek. But this is basically going to wrap up the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you didn't subscribe if you have subscribed yet. And I'll miss you guys for more videos coming up. So make sure those bonifications are turned on. But for the time being, I'm signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.